Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or if you are new here, welcome. My name is Ella and I make video videos on Wicca and witchcraft. Today I want to talk about something that has been highly requested. Excuse the dog barking in the background. So here we are going to be discussing an easy way to learn the tarot. So this video will not be including any information on the tarot itself but rather my favorite way of learning the tarot and a technique that I have found that really helped me elevate my tarot game. So I will not be telling you to memorize all the different meanings of the 78 cards or even double if you're using the reverse technique. Instead, I will be introducing you to a more intuitive type of way to read the tarot. In this video, I will be using the Rider Waite tarot card deck just because that is the most uh, clear way to read the tarot or t way the most clear deck, let's say, because it has the most basic symbols and most books refer to this deck. So this technique is a mix of intuitive reading and a little bit of learning on numerology and the actual suit cards of the tarot. So the traditional tarot has the minor and the major arcana. The major being all picture cards and the minor being a mix of suit cards and court cards. To simplify in tarot, we have wands, we have cups, we have swords and we have pentacles or coins. These are really similar to the playing cards, spades, diamonds, hearts and clubs and these suits are going to be giving you a very basic piece of information about the cards and hence your reading. So each suit also has an element that they are associated with and that is the most important thing for you to remember with the different suits. So ones are associated with fire. It usually refers to your spirit or action. Pentacles are associated with the element of earth. They usually refer to money or properties, things that you can own basically, and things that bind you to this earth, things like possessions. Swords are associated with the element of air and it is usually referencing thoughts, ideas and concepts. And lastly, cups is associated with water and with emotions, feelings, as well as your intuition. So once you know the basic suits, the next thing that is important is basic numerology from 1 to 10 or 1 to 0. My fire went out. <laughs> um, it's really cold here. So 1 stands for new beginnings, 2 stands for duality or balance, 3 stands for creativity or outcomes, 4 stands for foundations as well as hard work, Five stands for change or being in a midway sort of section, decision making. Six stands for harmony. Seven stands for contemplation or withdrawal. Eight stands for prosperity and manifestation. Number nine stands for conclusions or coming to an end. And number 10 stands for the end, infinity and a resolution or completion. So these 10 Numbers are, you know, a lot of different sites will give you different types of meanings for them, but that is the most common um, basic numerology. And I do recommend that you learn these basic 10 meanings. You definitely can learn these with using little tricks. So for example, number two, standing for balance, can, you know, relate back to this kind of symbol. Or 10 is, you know, a complete set. Um, five being in the middle of one and 10 being like being pulled in both directions. So you definitely have little tricks that can help you. Um, number four, for example, is the foundation. So the four walls of a house, for example. So you definitely can use these little tricks to help you with remembering these 10 numbers. So now to the actual meanings of the cards. The way that I found for myself that is the easiest technique is the storytelling method. Method. I by no means have invented this technique. Um, it's just one that I want to share with you because it found I found it really helped me in my practice. The easiest way to learn the storytelling technique is with the Rider Waite deck just because they do have very very clear um, symbols and images so it's very very easy to storytell with them because of how they are drawn. 
Now, if you don't have that specific deck, I'm not telling you to go out and immediately go buy it. First of all, you can have a look at them online as well in Google Images. Or if you do own a deck, you can still use the storytelling technique, especially if it's a very picturesque kind of deck. Um, however, you might want to refer back to the Rider Waite online just to cross-reference. Now, some quick little tips is to definitely write down the meanings in your grimoire, the basic meanings, so of the numbers as well as the suits and the elements. And another technique is definitely by pulling a card each day and writing down the meaning of each card that you think it may mean. And then in the evening when you are about to go to sleep, the best technique that I found is to cross-reference what your intuition told you in the morning and what the books or the websites tell you. Now a note about websites and books, I don't suggest for you to actually read the huge paragraph descriptions that a lot of books or websites have and rather stick to the keywords because the keywords are going to first of all train your intuition and second of all give you a much broader kind of explanation whereas a lot of the paragraphs tend to be very specific and sometimes make you even more confused because they really don't relate to your specific questions. Um, as well as some cards having just simply a very different meaning in your specific question or your specific reading. And a lot of tarot reading pages can also be very positive or very cynical. So I definitely suggest for you to use your own intuition and it does come with time and practice. And of course, if you are unsure in a reading, it's absolutely fine for you to check a book or your own written notes if the meaning is what you thought it was or if you're just simply like completely confused about a card, it's absolutely fine to cross-reference and to check. Like that's the only way most people learn so don't let anyone tell you you're not a proper reader just because you sometimes have a look in a book or an online website. With a lot of tarot decks you also usually get an immediate response of vibe so if I pick for example this card right here the general vibe that I would immediately get oh is quite happy you know we've got happy yellow bright colors whereas for example with this card the immediate vibe is more solemn and more depressed, let's say. So let's get into doing a quick little reading to give you a actual visual representation of how I would read cards and maybe you will pick up a thing or two in that as well. For example, I could be asking, will this relationship work out for me? And let's pull some cards. So we have the four, of Wands, we have the Devil, and we have the Page of Cups. So this might look like a pretty random assortment of cards, none really indicate relationships other than the Devil maybe, which would usually give a lot of readers a bit of a scare. However, because of our question, we always need to look at the cards in relation to each other. The Four of Wands. We know four stands for foundation. We know that it also stands for hard work. We are associating ones with fire and our beliefs and actions. If we want to tell the story of this entire card, it looks like two people are celebrating something. We see a huge castle in the background and we see a lot of florals up here. In a relationship reading, this card could indicate a marriage or a stable relationship built on hard work and dedication. Then we have the devil. So the devil card speaks usually of sin and lust and temptation, but also of desire and in my opinion of our shadow self. So perhaps we are in a very lustful relationship with a lot of desire. How do we know if we should read this card as positive or negative? So the easiest way is to look at the surrounding cards. Are they positive or negative? That can definitely already be an indicator. In case of doubt, we can pull another clarifying card, which will help us decide if it is a more positive or negative card. So if I had, for example, this card as my clarifying card, the Ten of Cups, of course, this is a very clear indication of it being a more positive 
um, meaning behind the devil card and it can help us with the entire reading. Now obviously it doesn't have to necessarily be this card if it is for example a more cryptic card let's say where you don't have any real storytelling because it's just for example once being depicted then again I would refer back to the numerology of it and another indicator that I like to actually refer to a lot is the sky in at least the Rider weight. So the sky can actually tell us a lot about emotions as well. So for example, yellow often indicates happiness, blue does too. When we have a more darker or subdued kind of color, so for example with our next card, that sky to me looks a little bit more cloudy, let's say, that can also help you read the cards. Speaking about the next card, here we have the page of cups. That is a card related to emotion. We also see that it's only one cup, meaning we should mostly associate it with the number one in numerology, with new beginnings. This may mean we will encounter new emotions we haven't had before. So what is the story behind this card? We have someone holding a cup with a fish in it, standing in front of an ocean with a lot of waves and a gray sort of sky. This may indicate that the relationship might be not be sunshines and smooth waters all the time. We may have a few fights, but this person doesn't seem to be too afraid of it all. He even encountered a surprise fish. Now we have sensitivity and emotions in this picture, but possibly also some surprises that we did not account for that we were blind towards in the beginning. So the conclusion that I would be drawing here is that it's a pretty positive one. Yes, the relationship does seem to have a pretty stable foundation with desire and sexuality in it. But we shouldn't fool ourselves into thinking it will be picture perfect. So even though we do have a positive sort of desire going on here, we do have not 100% smooth sailing. And we should expect some unexpected emotions coming up. Maybe some silly fights or tension that we need to overcome. So here I have a slightly different deck that I wanted to show you. This is the Ethereal Visions Tarot deck. And why I'm showing this to you is because you can see there are definite similarities within the original Rider Waite deck as well as a simple kind of symbolism and interpretation of the cards. Now, if you are still looking for cards to buy, you're not quite sure which cards you would like to get, then I do suggest you to pick something that is very similar in nature or symbolism to the original Rider Waite, simply because that way you will be able to learn them more easily. And with time, you are then able to read them more abstractly, meaning that, you know, different kind of decks that might not have imagery that is super, super clear, like these ones here have, is easier for you to, for you to read. Now, I also want to just bring this up because you might already have a tarot deck and I'm definitely not suggesting to you to go out and spend a lot of money on buying a new tarot deck, especially if you already have one, but rather that the tarot deck that you do already have, it is once again important to know the basics that I was speaking about before with the elements and the numerology as well as storytelling, that if you don't have the right weight, you can still learn with the deck that you do have. You'll be getting an intuitive reading from those cards. So I hope this video helped you in your tarot practice, in your tarot journey. And of course, if you did like this video, don't forget to give it a like. And of course, don't forget to subscribe as well. If you would like to support me and my channel, I do have a Patreon. So if you are interested in that, the link will be in the description box. And I also am leaving the link to my public Discord server. So if you're looking for a very open, um, charming group of people that are into witchcraft and wicca and you would like to talk about it more with like-minded people that link will be there too as well as the link to my crystal shop and my blog as well as of course all my social media links so i'll leave you with that thank you so much and blessed be see you next time